started. My name is Mark Bishop with Healthy Schools Campaign, and you are here listening to our webinar on the American School and University Green Cleaning Award, or the Green Cleaning Award for Schools and Universities, uh, brought by American School and University Magazine, the Green Cleaning Network, and Healthy Schools Campaign. So thank you all for joining us today. Um, I let you know before we get fully started just a little bit of background a little bit of overview a little bit of logistics um, this is part of the healthy schools campaign webinar series this year we have five planned um, we it is August 11th we are doing our green cleaning awards in September we'll have one on infection control and we will be scheduling shortly our learn from the leaders webinar coming up um, so come back and join us go to greencleanschools.org forward slash webinars so you can register for all of our future webinars as well as I download our archived webinars as well. Also, a quick thank you to all of our sponsors um, who make this possible, um, particularly our, um, our our sponsor, our our uh, premier level sponsors with Kimberly Clark, Sealed Air, and UL Environment. So I want to thank them for being there to make all of this work happen. Uh, here at Healthy Schools Campaign, you, you want you to be part of the conversation. So join us on Twitter, follow Healthy Schools, tweet to Healthy Schools, Green Clean Schools, and share your thoughts. And if you have any questions, any questions about applying for the American School and University Award, please let us know and we will get back to you uh, on social me media. But also we would love for you to have your words and have your questions and answers here today. Um, logistics, we're going to run about an hour for the webinar. There will be... I always get the question. So there will be a recording of this webinar made available online back on our greencleanschools.org website. So you will be able to download the presentation as well as hear the video and audio of the webinar. And at the end, there will be a short survey. So please take that and, uh, and let us know your thoughts. So Q&A session also, because we are going to want to get here from you. Um, there will be the final 15 minutes or so will be Q&A. There will be an ask question box on the lower right hand side of your screen. I encourage you as your questions come up, ask away. They will get queued up and at the end we will go through them and try to get them all answered. So please um, just let us know. Um, this is a great opportunity to ask any of us what your questions are about the application process or a a ask one of our award winners today. So. Let us know your questions. Um, today's speaker, uh, I'm Mark Bishop with Healthy Schools Campaign. Also, I have Kimberly Thomas of Clark County Public Schools and Steve Ashkin from the Green Cleaning Network. Uh, we will give a little bit more overview from them later, but uh, we're, we're excited because it's going to be a great topic. So again, this is about the Green Cleaning Award. Uh, if you need to jump, jump off, uh, make sure you check out the award. You can get it at asnumagazine.com. Or if you go to Google and just type in Green Cleaning Award, it is going to come up first, I promise. Uh, a little bit about Healthy Schools Campaign before we get started. So we may be new to you, so healthy. So I just want to give you a little background. Healthy Schools Campaign, we are a not-for-profit. We're based in Chicago, but we are nationally focused with, uh, with, with the work that we do. We work on the intersection of health and environment in the school setting, uh, so uh, issues of food and fitness and nutrition, nutrition, but also environmental health and green cleaning has been a core to the work that we have been doing for years because we believe that ultimately a healthy student is going to be a more successful student and we have a responsibility of making sure that every part of the school day um, the students can experience healthfulness um, and learn about aspects of health throughout the school day uh, and green cleaning is an important part of that experience. Um, so. Uh, a little bit of background, uh, you know, green cleaning and the work that we've been doing it spans now at this point over a decade. Now we know that the U.S. Green Building Council launched LEED EBOM um, for you know LEED for existing buildings back in 2002. Uh, but our our work in green cleaning got started in 2006 with our good friend Steve Ashkin, and it kind of progressed from there. We worked on policy. I established it. Um, we worked on policy in Illinois where we passed a green cleaning law in 2007 requiring schools to, to use green cleaning practices. Uh, and then we worked in states around the country to help support other states moving in the same direction. Um, we've been working at the federal level to promote best practices, to promote uh, recognition programs by our awards program, but also working with the EPA, uh, uh, EPA and the Department of Ed on the work that they're doing to promote green cleaning through the Green Ribbon Schools program and through their environmental health work. Uh, and just this past year, we're really excited to say 
that we launch our Green Cleaning Leadership Council, uh, and uh, one of our council members is here today, and these are from past award winners and the best of the best in schools that are really doing um, the work changing how schools are cleaning and helping us update our guidance and provide real on-the-ground recommendations to schools as they try to move down the path towards green cleaning. Um, let me keep going and, and tell a little bit about our Leadership Council. Uh, you will hear from Kim today, uh, Kimberly Thomas, uh, but the Leadership Council right now, we have 10 members on it. They're all past award winner, winners and we look at them as the change agents, change agents, the change agents in their schools and the change agents that are working with us as a group to really help change how schools, all schools, are going to be cleaning. They help work with us to support our program and identify best practices and help us really vet what's going on and when we want to make recommendations, make sure that their recommendations are reality-based and things that can be improved or implemented on the ground and really help with us um, by providing leadership in that way. And then finally, we just got back a week and a half ago from our annual summit. It was an exciting opportunity where we had almost 100 people coming together all to talk about green cleaning, best practices, changing policies, and really helping set a framework for changing how schools clean across the country. It was an exciting opportunity, so keep your eyes open for our Green Clean Summit next year. Um, so I'm going to jump on, uh, let me just jump real quick to, um, to introducing Kim Thomas. So Kim is the Executive Director of Plant Services and Custodial Operations uh, for Clark County School Districts in Athens, Georgia. Um, Kim you know, the, the, is uh, American School and University recent award winner in 2014, so that was from last year's application. And she's also on our leadership council, so I am thrilled to have Kim here to talk a little bit, and she's going to tell a little bit about what her experience was um, with the uh, ap application process and what it meant to her and what it was, what, uh, how her school and her program benefited from participating. So, Kim, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mark, for the invitation. Certainly, hopefully, um, everyone's having a great day. I know today was our first day of school here in Athens in Clark County, and um, we were, I was mentioning earlier to Mark and Stephen, you know, that you know, real life world is upon us. We had two major storm cells and lightning strikes and a serious thunderstorm all last night, but even with all of calling um, some of the staff in and things like that. We were able to get school started and meet those buses with those happy faces of the, of the kids. And um, so definitely I'm glad to be here. Um, a little bit about um, our program in Athens and, and what was uh, kind of a, a inspiration for us to apply for the Green Cleaning um, Award is that I've been at the um, Clark County School District. This is going into the third year before I spent 20 years at the University of Georgia. And uh, part of that in student affairs and in the latter part uh, working for the uh, plant services department. And so with that aspect of coming into working with, 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 with students and wanting to provide you know healthy and safe um, facilities for them to learn. Um, certainly working in the school district has been an important part of that. So that was an inspiration. Um, coming into a public school um, system um, was inherent upon making sure that we had a motivated staff. One of the things we initially saw is that we had an eager staff. They wanted to do a great job and we wanted to provide a great inspiration and a morale booster. And certainly the application process, reading what the requirements would be, um, building a team of, um, of staff members, supervisors, custodians who uh, were able to kind of look into to how we wanted to move our program for set a great foundation for us. And um, some of the highlights I'll share with you, we have about 21 um, school facilities, about three to four admin buildings, and uh, we're kind of in an urban environment. We're about uh, 60 minutes away from Atlanta. And so um, we kind of have the boast of, of, of kind of both worlds, so to speak, a little bit of an urban, but also a rural um, area as well. Um, we really looked at, as far as our program highlights, to 
implement a, a comprehensive training program where we have a lot of the staff who maybe have worked 30 years more than a lot of new staff. So really laying a good foundation for training, um, looking at um, getting the support of our administration. So we really worked hard on getting some district-wide policies that recognized that we wanted to have green cleaning as a daily practice. We worked with our school, our, um, our school administrators, our science teachers, and our local sanitation department to have single stream recycling. And we also worked across the board to have safety inspections. One of the other things we were um, really interested in doing and we thought would help our program, we developed a customer survey where we actually talked to school principals and assistant principals and school nurses, and we had our staff help develop that customer survey. And we also continue to do joint walkthroughs with our custodial staff and our school staff. One of the other things that we were really interested in doing with our program was looking at how we could really affect indoor air quality. So with that, we have worked with um, collaboratively with the local Atlanta, EPA, Region 4 um, educators to bring them in and do walkthrough assessments of several of our schools and then build from that platform. So with that, we, we felt we had a good foundation um, for our program and we were very excited that, um, that we were named an honorable mention. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, you know, Kim, we're going we're gonna to move on, and we're going to have Steve Ashkin now speak about the, um, the specific award. Um, so for those of you who don't know Steve Ashkin, he's the executive director of the Green Cleaning Network, um, the founder and president of the Ashkin Group, also the founder and the CEO of the Sustainability Dashboard Tools. But from my perspective, he's also the foundation of the work that we do here at Healthy Schools Campaign and really help create, um, help create the work, um, all of the work that we do here uh, on green cleaning. So we have a lot to be thankful for for all the work he's done because he's really had a tremendous impact on green cleaning uh, across the country. So I'd like to introduce Steve and say, Steve, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much, Mark, and thank you to everyone that's on the call today. We appreciate you spending a little bit of time with us. Um, I do want to begin by, Mark, again, telling, telling you in front of all of your colleagues and peers <laughs> And I think you and the Healthy Schools campaign is just absolutely awesome. You're doing great work for our kids, and I'm certainly glad to be helping you. And certainly all of you on, uh, on the phone, I suspect you feel exactly the same way. Otherwise, the reality is you wouldn't be on the call today. And, of course, Kim, thank you very much for your time today. You know, your experience dealing with the weather on the first day of school really does highlight many of the challenges that um, folks in your position have uh, making sure, regardless of what your plans for the days are, that the kids and staff really have a good experience and that we're protecting their health and managing things appropriately. Um, today what I want to talk about and spend a little bit of time um, is on the specifics of how you can apply for the award. Uh, part of what we really want to do is to make this process easy for you. And so that's what I'm going to attempt to do. As Mark mentioned in the beginning of the webinar, there's a chat box at the right. So uh, please ask some questions and, you know, let's make this time as valuable and helpful to you as possible. So, you know, submit your questions and also we'll leave some time at the end for us to actually have the discussion, again, to be as helpful to you as possible. So the issue is uh, why to apply. And I think fundamentally there really is a few basic issues. Uh, obviously, we feel that custodial departments, whether we're talking about K-12 or talking about a college or university, we don't get the kind of respect that, frankly, we deserve. Uh, and this often plays out, especially during budgetary times. If people take us for granted, it also becomes easier for them to reduce our budgets or 
you know, especially when we compete with other parts of the school, the university, the, the IT folks getting new technology, um, you know, all the other things that schools and universities have to deal with. We have to make sure our communities know how important our work is. So certainly recognition from the award and, you know, getting your picture in American School and University and doing all these things is a great way to show um, your board, uh, your administrators, kind of the cool stuff that you're doing. And it's also really gratifying and rewarding for your staff as well. But the other thing that I think is really important is sort of the concept of continual improvement and what I call to prevent backsliding. Uh, we have a lot of schools who have been participating in our program over the years, and what it turns out for them is that it allows sort of a standardized process for them to evaluate what they have done during the year. It is a fact that the cleaning industry is really developing lots of interesting, innovative green technologies. So. What this review process does will help make sure that you continue to pay attention to those things and kind of keep pushing the envelope because it becomes too easy for us to just get comfortable with all the things that we're dealing with and perhaps not um, put enough effort or find the time to do new innovative technologies. The other reason that I think it's valuable to do this is it prevents what I call backsliding. Uh, unfortunately, you know, at times our workers may mean well, but while we may have trained them on a certain process or using a certain product or training them on dispensing systems or new floor care programs, sometimes they'll just revert back to how they used to do things. And by doing an annual review, we'll also make sure that we're sort of catching that at a reasonable amount of time and giving you the opportunity to address that. And finally, you know, long term, what I hope we'll be able to do is figure out how to be able to use this data and share with all of you some benchmarking information so that not only are you looking at your own school, but somehow we'll be able to help you compare how you're doing in terms of purchasing or square footage that custodians are cleaning and different types of schools and universities and sizes, but to help you really identify opportunities for improvement comparing to your peers. But overall, the main issue is with all of this, it's easy. And let me repeat that, it's easy, and I think it can be extraordinarily helpful to you. Uh, next slide, please. So as you can see, um, here is our judging panel, and we really try to do this well. So um, we try to take out all the biases, and we really are focused on how do we find the best information and do our best to recognize who genuinely deserves the award. Uh, next slide, please. So now I want to get into, uh, Mark, are we going to do a little survey? Do we have time for that, or do you want yeah, to let's, skip that? let's try and, you know, we're, let's skip it right now. I'm having some computer issues. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so l let me just continue and sort of just give some basics or background on what it is we're trying to do. And on the screen, you can see this is our definition of green cleaning, uh, cleaning to protect health without harming the environment. Pretty, pretty standard definition. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. And the main message that we have for everyone, you know, in, in you know, our elementary schools and our K-12 schools, we know that kids aren't just miniature adults. Um, and but beyond just a program to protect kids who sit on the floors and have hand-to-mouth activities and their behavior requires us more to protect them. And, you know, there's lots of children's environmental health stuff, and I'm sure Mark can, you know, go on at length talking about this. But the reason I'm also mentioning it is to make sure that everyone knows it's not just about little kids. You know, we know that, for example, college students, are of childbearing age, 
And it's important that we protect them from the products that are being used in the environment to clean, whether it's their dormitories or to clean their classroom space or the libraries. There are new technologies, as we all know, that can reduce the risk of harming their health. And then, of course, there are staff, and we have all kinds of issues with staff and with allergies and asthma and all these things. So we really are trying to protect people's health while at the same time recognizing that the industry has huge environmental impacts. And we can just be smarter about how we contribute to these growing global issues, whether we're talking about forestry and the paper products we purchase or, you know, the use of petroleum for making plastic trash bags. I mean, all these things that we impact every time we make a purchasing decision relative to green clay. Uh, next slide, please. So with our, so that's sort of what we're trying to accomplish. We want to get schools and universities involved for lots of reasons, and the application for this is due on September 11th. Um, please, when you submit it, I really want to encourage you to make sure that you include um, uh, the GCA 2015, so have your institution's name in the subject line with GCA 2015, make sure that we're, we don't miss it. Um, you know, Healthy Schools Campaign does a lot of stuff, and we don't want to just inadvertently miss your application. And when you send in the application, you can also attach all kinds of things, um, your communication tools, if you have pictures, if you have videos, you have anything. You can send us everything you got if you like. Some of it's not necessary, but we'll take everything, sort through it, and really so that you can really make the best case for your program. Next slide, please. So one of the things that we want to point out is the awards application can be submitted not only by the school or university, but also people in the cleaning industry, your product distributor, if you're using an outside contractor. you know. We want to recognize everyone that's involved with the process. And frankly, our goal is to make sure that every school, every school is a clean and healthy school. So however we can do that to spread the word, to engage industry, and to ask those of you from a school who's even done this before, please talk to a colleague. Please talk to one of your friends. Help them do this. You know, it really is going to take all of us to make a difference across the country. So, Mark, would you switch the slide so we can get into talking about some of the very specifics about the application? There you go. I uh, appreciate that. So, the next part is um, the actual details of what's going on with the application itself. Um, as you see on the slide, there's three parts to it. And so let me get into and talk a little bit about um, about uh, what the application is doing. So, Mark, would you uh, give me the next slide, please? So the first thing that we want to do is to talk about your school. And it's pretty simple. We're just looking for some basic information, you know, what kind of school it is or what kind of university, if it's a technical school, if it's high school, if it's a college, junior college, so some basic information on the type of the facility. We're going to ask for some basic information like the number of buildings on your campus, total square footage, uh, number of students. So some very simple information, and that way we can sort of make sure we're comparing apples to apples. And ultimately, we believe that this data will become valuable as we help you with some benchmarking information. Um, we'll want some cleaning data, you know, um, you know, approximate budget, uh, the number of full-time custodians, and we're going to ask you, you know, it, it, how long you have been doing your cleaning program for. And then finally, we're going to ask you who you want to get recognized. And this gives you a real opportunity to, to not only express your appreciation to your staff, and frankly, if you want to give us a list of 100 people who want to get get recognized, we'll include all of them. If you want to include your distributors, your suppliers, people who've been helpful, administrators, people who've been helpful, board members, 
this is a chance for you to give them a shout out and recognize them and let them know how much you appreciate what it is that they're doing. Next slide, please. Okay, so the next one is we want to talk a little bit about your program. Now, this is one where it is actually an essay, and three parts of this are essays. And this one is an essay up to 300 words. So basically, this is a, should be a page or less of a written document. And again, we're trying to keep this easy for you. And what we're trying to do for, you know, telling us about your program and how you got started, you know, in the application itself, it actually suggests four things. One is to discuss when you were started, who you engaged when you got started, you know, did you work with teachers, did you work with students, did you work with the board, did you work with administrators, were there school clubs, university clubs, whatever. The third one is what you've accomplished, and the fourth one is where you're going. So we sort of say, here are some things for you to think about. And what that means is if you write 75 words about each of those four subjects, you finish the essay. So again, this is basics on your program, how you got started, and where you're going with that. Next slide, please. The next part beyond how you got started is we want a, 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 a description of your program. And you see in this one I sort of outlined a little bit more of what it is so that you can take a look at the, the specific areas that we're trying to suggest, again, to make it helpful to you to be able to uh, easily fill out the application. Uh, this part of the application is also an essay. It is up to 700 words, so up to two pages. If you want to do a half page, one page, but no more than two pages, again, not because we're not interested, but we are trying to make it easy for everyone. Um, you'll notice that you know there's a number of issues here, what strategies you use for cleaning, how you're training your people, what are the innovations that you want to talk about, but there's also two that I think are really important, and I know during Mark's presentation at the end, he'll talk about some of the trends, and you know, if you really want to win, these are the sort of the things that seem to um, you know, raise the people to the top. Because today, a lot of people are doing green cleaning, but the award winners are gonna look at things like innovation, but also the issue of sustainability, you know, and how this is tied into the school or university's broader sustainability efforts, if you're doing composting, if you're doing recycling, if you're doing light bulb replacements, energy efficiency programs, how you're reducing water, those other things. So how your custodial activities, your maintenance programs, how these things tie into the school or university's broader sustainability efforts. And then the other issue is this issue of evaluation. Um, one of the things that we're really trying to do is figure out how we're really measuring success. So how we measure cleaning performance. Are, it's not just that we're spending our time and we're allocating workers to it, but are we really addressing the cleanliness of the surfaces that are being touched? Are our disinfecting programs in critical areas, are they being successful? Um, so this issue of evaluation, if you're doing some measures, are some of the things that are important. So again, it's a total of 700 words. In this case, if you broke it down into um, you know, five sections, 140 words each, you just banged it out, it's good, and you're done, easy. Next slide, please, Mark. Now, the third part of about your program is a final essay on engagement. And this section is up to 500 words. And generally, what we see in the engagement process or what we suggest is that you just write a little bit about each of these four issues. You know, how you've developed school university policies around green cleaning, um, how you're addressing process related issues, um, how they clean, when they clean, those kind of things. 
The next one is communications, how we're engaging the larger community, the students, the community at large, um, how do we really engage them? Because we really find that ongoing success requires this type of thing. And one of the things that I want to, again, encourage is not only how we engage what we think about our community, so students and staff, but the broader community. So Kim is in Athens, Georgia, so how she engages the entire community of Athens. But what I want you to also think about, and I, this is not a requirement, I'm just trying to stimulate some thoughts, but how you communicate with other peers, so other schools, other universities, so you can help them, because we really do want to create healthier schools for all kids and all staff. And then the final one is, you know, let us know any awards or recognitions that you've received, whether it's, you know, like EPA Culture Schools Program or the Green Flag Program or, you know, if you've done Earth Day fairs or any of the ways that you're generating recognition. And candidly, not only do we want to see how you've been recognized, we're at, we actually learn a lot from this kind of thing so that we can share those ideas with other peer organizations. So these are good programs um, that have worked for you, that have recognized you, that we may want to share that information with others to encourage them to follow your example. So next slide, please, Mark. So the next part of the application is about the products. And, you know, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to ask you, tell us a little about, you know, what chemicals you're using, equipment, supplies, what have you, and identify if they're certified or, you, you know, how, how you define it as being green. Uh, for a lot of categories, chemicals, I think most of you, and of course the Quick and Easy Guide to Green Cleaning in Schools is going to recommend that you use third-party certified products. Your suppliers, your distributors all have access to them, so make it easy. But in other categories, um, if you're going to buy a floor pad for doing your floors, you know, there's no standards on what makes a green floor pad. If you're buying entryway mats, you know, some of these things, we want you to tell us how you thought about it being green. And again, this is not an essay. It can be have recycled content. I mean, just simple stuff, but so that we can get a real sense of how people in your position are really thinking about these issues, which also helps us figure out how we can be of assistance to you. Okay, uh, next thank you. So as you see, here's the awards criteria, and as I mentioned, it is based on the Quick and Easy Guide to Green Cleaning in Schools, and that guide will provide information and, and details on anything that you could need to help you not only develop your green cleaning program, but to continually improve it as well. Next slide, Mark. And there's the guide. And I know Mark, at the end of the discussion, um, will be sending out emails to all of you, and he'll be providing links to the program. Um, and I'm speaking specifically about the guide and all the other things we've talked about today, again, to make it easy for you to be able to um, apply. Next slide, please. And again, um, to win, and, and frankly, we'd love to have all of you guys win. But the thing that, I, again, I want to make sure that the keys, if you're really focused on winning and really thinking about how you provide the best application, really focus on sort of the bottom one, uh, the training issues, communications issues, how you're reducing exposures, and the evaluation and measurement one. Uh, these are the things that, again, as I talked about at the beginning, you know, not only are we trying to sort of help you and encourage you to have a structured annual review, but this really will help you drive continual improvement and, again, to reduce backsliding. So those things, these areas are the ones that help, and the overall program, I think, will keep you moving the whole process forward. 
Okay, a couple last things, and I'll turn it over to Mark. Next slide, please. Um, we do have lots of information beyond just the quick and easy guide. There's plenty of stuff on the web. Here's an article that we did in American School and University. And then the last thing is that I want to point out is also our Green Apple Day of Service that we are doing with the U.S. Green Building Council Center for Green Schools. And the purpose of this is to recognize the great work that custodians are doing. Um, it's really easy. It'll take you five minutes, five minutes to just list your custodial training programs. We don't ask much about it, just, you know, what you did, how many people were trained, how many kids were in the schools, what have you. And this will help us be able to share with the rest of the world the important work that we're doing, you know, in you know, our schools and universities and the important role that training of our custodians play. Um, recently, um, you, you know, we did, we looked at what the results have been, and so far um, we've listed the training of uh, 798 custodians, so almost 800 custodians, along with uh, 311,000 students. That's 311,000 students. So I hope you'll, um, you know, click on that link right there, um, greenapple.org, front slash green quitting. List your program, and it'll take you five minutes, and it'll really give us a great opportunity to promote to the larger audience the great work that schools are doing. And with that, uh, Mark, um, I'd like to turn this back over to you, and uh, thank you for your time. Great. Thank you so much, Steve. All right. So I'm going to walk through a little bit of um, what we have seen in the Green Cleaning Awards over the past couple of years, the trends that we've that we've seen, and kind of what we think that means. But if we were to look at you know at a very high level of of um, you know the trends, now we've been doing this Green Cleaning Award for eight years, and I think when it first started. Um, our hope was that we were making sure that the schools that were winning were using green certified products. And the reality is it's moved far beyond that. And green using certified products really has to be the baseline. Um, it really has to be the foundation. Because, but, but if that's all you're doing, you will, you, you know, it, it's, you're not, it's, your program probably will not rise to the top because there are so many interesting, innovative programs going on. But if I were to look at the six main trends that we have seen over the past couple of years through our awards program, I'd categorize them in these. Investing in people, when we're talking about training and really making sure that we understand why we're doing what we're doing, thinking about process. Two, looking beyond certified. So it's not people realize, you know, a lot of facilities are realizing, you know, EcoLogo, Green Seal, ULE, um, EPA, uh, Safer Choice are, are really important foundations, but we can do more. We can investigate ingredients and, and, and MSDS sheets and really understand what works for us, what works for your school and your values that you bring looking at standardization of how we are implementing our programs. Um, communication, uh, I say, I list this out as involvement in their schools, but making sure that schools, uh, that custodial programs are actually part and integrated into um, a, uh, a, the, the entire school community and not separate from tracking and metrics, and then finally looking at a broader supply chain. So let me go through those real quick. Um, it, just so we have an idea, in terms of investing in people, uh, we see a lot of people investing more in training. Um, applicants, you know, who are winning are looking at investing three to four to five or more days of training every year for their custodial services. And I won't say that's unheard of, but I would say it shows that there's a significant value in making sure that people understand that we need to train and treat our custodial services as professionals, and in particular because the the custodian the world of um, of cleaning has changed so much in the past ten years. We have to make sure that we understand what the latest technology, what the latest trends and needs of our facilities are to do a good job. We are seeing, um, you know, Temple University establish an entire school of custodial services so that they had a, a way of training on an ongoing basis new and existing staff to make sure that they are implementing their programs appropriately and consistently across their, their campus. 
um, you know, covering topics of the proper use of microfiber, personal protective you know equipment, looking at how to use chemicals, bloodborne pathogens, whatever the, the topics are, we're seeing that investment in your people is is a big, big differentiator and a big trend that we're seeing in the in the quality green cleaning programs. Um, the second thing that we call is beyond um, beyond certified, looking at chemical selection. Now, it's not just saying let's make sure all of our chemicals are green certified, but let's see what we can do to use safer, healthier, and fewer chemicals. Um, we're seeing a lot of schools <clears throat> that are saying, you know what, we can look at alternative floor options, flooring strategies, and we can eliminate the use of strippers. We don't want to bring those chemicals into our buildings at all. Uh, we are seeing um, the use of uh, general use disinfectants that keep their health and safety rating low. We want to make sure that we're not having those threes and fours that can be so toxic to the indoor environment, but make sure you're doing what you can, especially in those, on those products that don't have certification, but doing what we can to make sure that we are having a healthy um, safety profile for everything that comes in the building. We're seeing fewer chemicals being used. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's always fascinating to see the number of, of products that are being used in cleaning programs, and we're seeing the number being less than five nowadays. Um, people are using multi-use program, multi-use chemicals, as, as well as using systems that allow them to reduce the overall usage. In looking, and, and then we're also seeing a lot of water-based cleaning technologies. And when I say water-based, I mean these on-site generation technologies that are that are an interesting solution to, to some schools, so which are creating other opportunities for savings and transportation and packaging of the of, of the products that we bring into our schools. Um, next, we're looking at um, process, creating standardization. Uh, and, and a lot of schools are um, looking to systems that, and outside sources, whether it's Green Seal uh, ha who, that has their cer you know, certification for their process, whereas SIMS, um, whereas the process cleaning for healthy schools. Whether we know that there are a lot of systems out there that are helping schools and universities be consistent and have um, have 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 a standardization across their cleaning programs. And again, this is one I wouldn't say is a uh, is an absolute need, but it is very interesting to say that the value of consistency of training, consistency of implementation, is really being recognized by schools that are taking leadership around green cleaning. Um, next is, is is communication, um, because what we're in, in being part of this team, and what we're realizing is that really successful green cleaning programs are not ones that just swap out their chemicals and move on. These are the ones that actually become integrated into the school community. They build a green team. They do things to become integrated into the school community. Many schools, whether it's universities, whether it's K-12, they have teams that are looking at sustainability strategies within their, within their buildings or within their campuses and making sure that the custodial team is part of those discussions and part of those teams and part of those strategies becomes really important in part because it makes the custodial services more visible, it makes them more valuable, but it also makes the work that you all are doing better understood to all the occupants of the buildings. Uh, we're seeing trainings and, and, and awareness at in-services for teachers and administrators put on by the custodial staff so people understand the changes that are happening. Uh, in many schools, they're changing policies, and the custodial staff are going out and saying, we're changing how we're cleaning. We're changing what we're letting you bring into your classroom. This is why, this is how, and this is how it's going to make a healthier, better environment for you and your kids. Um, it becomes really important in the ensuring success of new programs. Um, looking at poster contacts, health fair participation, email updates, we're seeing communication simply being a very important part of a green cleaning program overall. Uh, one thing that's near and dear to my heart is evaluation. Uh, you know, there's an old there's an old adage that if you don't measure it, it doesn't happen, and I think that's very true nowadays in schools. And in, in while we're not seeing a uh, a, um, a consolidation of consistency around what the evaluation metrics are for schools, we are seeing schools are really taking a stab in trying to figure out how to do it. We're seeing a lot of schools that are taking making efforts of looking at occupant surveys, APA analysis, waste streams analysis, 
ATP testing, purchasing analysis, looking at what they're buying over time and are they driving it down or are they make changing their purchasing patterns, looking at the chemicals that they're using in their schools, looking at health records and can they make a connection between the cleaning program and the health records. And again, at this point, I don't think any one of them is the, is the, is the magic bullet, but what we're seeing is that there are a lot of efforts to really, um, you know, put, put more thought, resources, science, and evaluation behind our cleaning programs. And that's going to help, again, support our cleaning programs, support the work that we're doing, but, and make for a more successful program overall. Um, and then sustainability. Um, in, you know, we, we are seeing a lot of schools that in, in the essays that they're putting forth, they're saying we're starting to think more about supply chain. We're actually not just buying a chemical from our distributors. We're talking to them. And we're engaging in conversations of how can we do more, how can we do better, how can we make sure that when we make purchases for a custodial department, it impacts everything, all the purchasing decisions that we're doing in our schools, and how can we, um, and, you know, and how can we, you know, connect our custodial efforts with the overall sustainability goals of our schools, of our universities, of our campuses. And this is a, you know, this can be a really powerful messaging for, for everyone who's involved. Um, and, you know, and in, in, in seeing, asking what's next, I, I think I hinted at this, but um, I, we're, we're still looking at water technology and these on-site generation and we're trying, the prices are dropping. Um, we're trying to figure out what that means and what that means for schools. We don't think this, you need to have water technology to have a green cleaning program, but what we do think it's a, it's interesting to keep our eye on and see where it's going and, and to see if the marketplace, what shakes out in the marketplace, what, what, what claims really get verified as being real and it really works and, and what kind of falls on the wayside. We're not sure yet, but what we do know is the technology is really driving a lot of change. Um, we definitely see process will continue in the standardization of process is going to continue to be important. Um, and again, it, how that rolls out, we don't know. How that rolls out, whether it's be, you know, by um, you know, more, more groups like the SIMS program or the you know, Green Seal program, um, or if it's just be more standardization within the school district. But we do know standardization is going to be really important, again, as part of that, in the same way that teachers get professional development and strategies on how to teach. We need to do the same thing. and We're seeing the same thing of standardization and process being taught to our custodial staff. And finally, this evaluation and how can we track and how can we communicate what we're doing, what we're accomplishing, how we're and how we can do that all through evaluation. Um, I, I, so that is brings me to the end of my, uh, of, uh, of our presentation. So I have a few questions that have already come in. So I'm going to say to anyone on the uh, on the line, if you have more questions, feel free to post them. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to go ask a couple of questions for me and my co-presenters. So Kim and Steve, are you available? And for yes. a few more, okay, great. So I'm going to start by taking a couple of questions that we brought in. So Kim, I'm going to start with you. Um, what Kim, what do you see? as the benefit to you and your school of applying and or winning? Um, I think it really, number one, helped our staff morale. Um, as I had mentioned earlier, one of the things coming in initially into a, a public school system from a university was realizing the high demand on the time and how um, in the past just that dedication to having training, having um, motivational um, opportunities to work in small groups, small crews at schools versus large auditorium style classroom type of training um, was very different and also being able to have more hands-on whether it would be bringing in our vendors or the development of our own training um, that we really tried to concentrate to the needs of particular schools. So I think the number one thing for us was morale and making sure that we were able to support our custodial staff in all of the ways that they needed to, to feel and to understand that they were true um, public, publicly safe um, professionals for their um, school facilities. I think another thing that was really important for us is to build a relationship. You touched on it a lot with the communication piece, but building that communication and that support across the district, um, being able to go in front of the board um, 
of education and talk about how important the role of our custodial and our building maintenance staff is to to the overall cleaning of their facilities and getting their support as well as the superintendent and also to help you know develop the policy that was that's critical to develop the policy that would support where we wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. I, I don't think I ever really thought about the morale side of it so so explicitly. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna start talking about that. Thank you. Um, let me go to another question. Um, and hey, hey Mark. Hey yeah. Mark, this is Steve. Do you mind Do you mind if I share a quick comment? Go for it. You know, you know, one of the things that I always find interesting is when a custodial department, whether it's a school, or university, goes before the administrators, before their bosses, and says, "We want to train our staff." Okay, so it's summer break. We're going to do lots of work. Lots of work has to go on. But we want to carve out some time to do staff training. And then the challenge is when, you know, other people who really aren't directly involved with actual cleaning may have budgetary or other administrative responsibilities, they say, well, why do you need X hours to train your staff? And mm -hmm. the challenge that we have is we really have no baseline to say the best programs are the best because they invested X, Y, Z hours in training their people. Mm -hmm. And that is part of what we're really trying to do is to make sure we give you, you know, the ammunition that you need to go back and say, thank you for giving us four hours to train our entire staff for the year, but we really need 24 hours or we need, you know, eight hours or we need 12 mm -hmm. hours. Yeah. So it really is important that we have something to compare it to so that you have what you need to be able to make your case for training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's an excellent point. Thank you, Steve. All right, let me, let's keep going on with some other questions. Um, here, here's a question of someone who uh, wants to win and doesn't want to waste time. Um, how competitive <laughs> is the award? Um, so uh, would you like to start on that one, Steve, or would you like me to? Well, if, you know, I'm trying to sort of read into the question a little bit. And uh -huh. if your question is, you know, if I spend 15 minutes, am I going to be the grand prize winner? Um, probably not. Yeah. Um, we do try to make the application easy. It's going to take a little bit of work. It's not incredibly difficult. But, yes, you know, it, th th this is a competitive program. There are some amazing winners that work really hard at this stuff and are willing to put in an hour or two to just explain what you're doing. So, yeah, mm -hmm. this is very competitive, and um, and I hope that doesn't scare you off. You know, competition is great. Yeah. I, I would add two, um, um, two points to that. Um, while it, it is it, it absolutely is competitive, and the quality of the applicants has increased every year. Um, I would also say is we really do go out of our way to try to use – the applications, you know, positively, because we want to make sure that programs that aren't recognized one year um, stay engaged and make those steps to become recognized in subsequent years. And we have many stories of schools that have applied three, four, five times and using the application to kind of learn what were their deficiencies and what could they do better and how can they improve their programs to get um, to get uh, to get recognized. So I, I think it's um, it's a little the competition is always helps spur people but the other side of it is it's about continual improvement and using this as a benchmarking opportunity. So I think th there's, there's more to it than just the competitive side of it. So yeah, and I can quickly add something. I know a lot of times I'm accused of uh, being probably a little bit more modest <laughs> than what I need to. Um, but one of just a couple things to talk about what happened in our application process. I mean, we spend in Clark County at least 16 to 20 hours per year training. Some of that includes a monthly one hour to one hour and a half um, session with our head custodians. And then they have to spend at least 10, 5 to 10 minutes each week reviewing either um, preventative maintenance on their equipment or talking about uh, particular issues they might be having in their school, how to address um, 
high dusting or how to address um, uh, just different types of, of spill or, or dealing with hard floor or carpet uh, issue in their school. And then we also have our school nurses coming in working with our staff to make sure that, you know, we got maybe about a fourth of our staff CPR trained, um, doing um, cardiac awareness, EpiPen awareness, because one of the things we all also have to be aware of, we have a lot of you know, students who have respiratory issues and, and getting some training to make sure that our staff understands how we clean can affect our students and asthma triggers. And then we go into making sure we look at the cost and we're looking at the um, products and the equipment that we buy. We also have an ESCO program where we have um, comprehensively looked at lighting and water and how we even deal with irrigation. So it's a, a whole lot of things that went into the application and I didn't highlight that. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you so much. Let me say, we're coming up on the hour, so let me, uh, we'll just take one more question. Uh, and so here I have a question about metrics. And the question is, are there specific key metrics that you are looking for in your application? Um, and uh, Steve, would you want to take a jump at that one? I will, and, and Mark, if you have a different opinion, please share it. And, and Kim, since you're on the review panel for this, um, I'd be interested if you have a different opinion. You, you know, at this point, we really don't have, haven't figured out what the, uh, you know, key performance indicators, the KPIs are. I mean, to be blunt about it, we're really trying to figure it out. You know, we're really trying to figure out how do we determine how clean things are. You know, there's a lot of interest in using ATP meters and other things, but they may or may not be appropriate for all schools and universities. So we're still, in some respect, in the learning phase, and we need your input, especially from, you know, the, the best programs in the country to help us really understand what performance indicators are the most helpful. You know, can we tie it to absenteeism? Can we tie it to um, student performance on standardized tasks? Can, you know, can we do any of these things? So um, in, in some respects, any, any measurements that you're doing, we're interested. So there's not specific ones, but help us solve this part of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And I know for us in Clark County, like you said, there is no really one um, metric that we look for in evaluating how effective our cleaning is. We do look at, you know, the ATP testing. We work with school nurses if they identify by certain trends in absenteeism or if they're certain, um, um, suddenly getting a spike in some of the, the students who may have um, you know, respiratory um, complaints and come to the nurse's office. We try to, you know, increase our cleaning in those particular areas to help try to, you know, drive those numbers back down as far as school attendance. And then we also, you know, kind of have based our program on, you know, APA standards as well. So we're trying to cover many different things. And again, you know, with our customer survey questionnaires that we send out. Now, how is our staff doing? Is there something you would like to see that we're not doing that can help? And um, working um, with our teachers, one of the things we're really proud of, they've even got on board and they're bringing refillable spray bottles and we put in our you know, green certified disinfectant and they're using that in their classes and trying to reduce um, bringing in you know, wipes and from the, that they have bought from the stores and things like, like that. So it's a combination of a few different things. And, and I'll just wrap up by, by agreeing with all those statements, but say one more point is one of the things that we are able to do with our Green Cleaning Award is we're able to see trends of what's going on in schools across the country. So actually by seeing what measurements are happening in schools and what, that, what metrics are being tracked helps us identify what trends and maybe we'll be able to help identify best practices that we want to replicate and share um, down the road. So we see this more than just a award, but we actually see this as potentially um, supporting our work in identifying and promoting best practices. And
with that note, I want to say a final thank you um, to all your participation for being for taking the time out of your day and for spending the past hour with us. Um, please um, go to American School and University Magazine, uh, the Green Cleaning Award. You can Google it or follow the URL um, on the screen right now. Download the application, apply for your school, share it with your schools if you're a distributor reach out to your schools and make sure that they know that this is an opportunity. Uh, if you're a parent, send it to your um, to your school boards and let them know that you think you guys should apply. But regardless, get your schools interested in green cleaning and applying for the award today. Um, thank you guys so much. We appreciate all your time. And with that, we'll call it a, call it a afternoon and say enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye-bye.